Hello, everyone. Welcome to a special webinar on the COVID-19 pandemic. My name is Josh Smith, I'm the Vice President of Internet Marketing for Home Services over here at Scorpion. And joining me today is Ellen Rohr, the COO of Zoom Drain, and David Kurzius, who's the Director of Internet Marketing over at Scorpion. So welcome to both of you, and thank you so much for being here on the webinar today. Yeah, thank you for having us. Hey, hey. <laughs> hey, hey. Well, we got a lot of good stuff that we need to talk uh, about today. We're obviously here to discuss the coronavirus, the impact that it's had on home services across the nation. As uh, in particular, we're going to discuss plumbing and HVAC companies. So now more than ever, home service businesses need to get the latest information, advice, and insights. So let's jump right in. I want to kind of throw this first question your way, Ellen. What should a home service business owner implement immediately in their day-to-day -day operations, given the current landscape? We paused long enough to remind ourselves of our mission and our objectives. You know, like, let's keep the main thing the main thing. Our mission at Zoom Drain is to demonstrate the best that business can be. So the best doesn't mean perfect. It means giving our best to our two main objectives right now. And number one is that we want to, we are committed and uh, we are required to protect the health and safety of the nation. That's what plumbers and drain cleaners and, and uh, uh, sewer professionals do. That's number one. Keep them safe. Keep everyone safe. And number two is to keep them solvent. Safe and solvent. So solvent is we are essential workers. We are going to go to work. So those are the two objectives that we that we have, and I, you know, I am so inspired by how my team has stepped into this crisis and done whatever they need to do on a minute by minute basis to make sure that they are, um, you know, keeping people safe, community safe, as well as families and team members, and going to work. So don't let's let's not miss the main thing here. Absolutely. You know, yeah. one other thing too is septage. Yeah. It's always been it's always been dangerous. It's dangerous yesterday, it's dangerous today. Certainly what we have now is this enhanced understanding mm -hmm. of COVID-19 and what that means to the landscape. As professionals, we accept that as part of our challenge to make sure we can solve uh, our community's problems when it comes to dangerous substances like clearing drains. Yeah. David. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I absolutely agree with you completely, Ellen. And on top of that, um, definitely just letting your customers know what steps you're actually taking to keep them safe. Get it on your website, send it in an email blast over um, to your current clients if you, know, you have maintenance packages with them. And just let everyone know what you're doing to keep their loved ones safe when you're entering their home, when you're talking to them. It's really, really important. Um, to make the consumer, you know, feel comfortable with you coming into their home. Yeah, I love can I, can I jump on that a second too? Yeah. We put together a video, as many, many people in our community have, that lays out what we're doing to keep customers safe. And then use that as a guideline that aligns with our manuals that this is what that looks like. So that we have the manuals for what you're supposed to do as a franchisee, as a team leader. Are you going to go or not go on that job? You have to keep them safe. These are the standards. And this video matches that. Oh, was that. a really effective tool. It started as a way to communicate with our customers, but we leveraged it to communicate within the organization. Yeah. There's, you know, there's a lot of, uh, just before we even started the webinar, we were discussing kind of um, the unemployment rates that are sweeping the nation. Obviously, we haven't seen as large of an impact um, on home service businesses because we're considered essential businesses and essential services, which is awesome. Um, but some for some companies, they may be asking the question and some employees may be asking the question about like, well, what's going on with my job, my role? What's happening with this? What are some things that business owners can do right now to make sure they're retaining their employees during this time? Alan, let's go, go and start with you. One thing that I, I made uh, a little uh, video that's going out to social media today on this. I am a plumber's wife. I know what it's like to have my loved one come home and look like he is dangerous, better not come in the house because he's covered in it, right? So I think one of the ways that we can keep people working and keep them engaged is to communicate with their families because their families now are at home and saying, wait a minute, why are you going to work? What's going on out there? And so making sure their families are, you know, the CDC recommendations are good. The basics apply. Uh, you know, the loved ones should take their clothes off in the garage, take their clothes directly <laughs> to the washing machine, you know, these kinds of things to make sure that 
that, that we're caring for the people at home as well as the people yeah. on the job. Yes. Such a good point. D- David, yeah. seen like the business owners that you've worked with, that your team's engaged with, um, what are some of the things that you've seen that they've done to take care of their employees during this time to retain? Yeah, well, one of the most important things is not to panic and make knee-jerk reactions. You know, there's still jobs out there to be had. So, you know, a lot of people go first thing is cutting their advertising. Well, how are you going to keep your phone ringing if you're cutting your advertising? Because there still is the search volume out there. People are still calling, you know, people are still going on the internet and more than ever, when we're all at home right now, you know, toilets are getting flushed more and more, or, or if it's cold out, your uh, heating system's getting ran more and more. So there's more and more problems coming up. So, you know, keeping your phone ringing for your employees to be able to send them out on the jobs and not get in the fear factor is I need to cut everything and save all this money. Now, this is time to take advantage of it because the search volume is still there. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, You know, this one I want to throw your way first, David. Uh, What's the best approach right now that you've seen business owners take to make sure they're first following all the CDC safety guidelines and secondly, showing empathy to the customer during this? Yeah, um, I'll actually use myself as a perfect example. I had an issue at my house because I've been staying here more often (laughs) and had to have a plumbing company come over and help us out. Um, what they did exactly was called me over the phone. Uh, when the technician showed up to my house, he stayed a safe about 10 feet away from me outside. And we talked through the whole process, what he was going to do, what he was going to be looking for, made me feel really, really comfortable. Then after that, he went back to his truck. He fully suited up, put on a mask, put on gloves. And he let me know, hey, once I have this stuff on, we're not going to be able to communicate as much. You're not going to be able to hear me well, which I, I completely understand. But I already knew what he was doing, what he was looking for. I let him into my house. He went, took care of the problem, went back out to his truck, took everything off, stayed again outside, stayed about 10 feet away from me and explained everything to me, what they did, what they fixed. And then with that, then they, instead of me having to sign anything right then and there, they sent me an invoice to my email, which then allowed me to be able to pay and made me feel really comfortable. And if every business was doing that, I have no problem with them coming into my home. I mean, they followed every guideline that I know of from the CDC. Yeah. Yeah. Ellen, anything to add to that? (laughs) Well, I just, I love that. I love that you bragged on them and all that good protocol you know, like in my world, it's keeping the plumbing world is keeping good water from bad water. In in the HVAC world, it's keeping good air and bad air. Like these are these are things that can cause problems with our customers every day. It's not the time to abandon that responsibility. It's the time to get creative and stricter than ever to the protocol that you have, and make sure every team member is um, is. Uh, is following it. Hey, can I bring up, you know, timely is what just happened in the, in the, on the government in terms of some relief loans, et cetera, for businesses right now. Yeah. There is some terrific relief for those folks who keep their employees working. Now, if you're going to keep your employees working, certainly, you know how I feel about keeping tight and right financials and and being able to weather a storm because you're, you're solid financially, but no matter where you are, let this be the, the starting point to get even better. These loans and um, opportunities available, the the Paycheck Protection Program literally will relieve your, will pay you to keep your team working. There are rules about it, and I'm not the end-all expert, but I want you to find out about this. Mm -hmm. And imagine that even if your calls drop off, what an opportunity to train your team to get the trucks fixed, to get the, the place cleaned up. You know, what you could do with your team members, even if you do have a, 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 a down day, is pretty amazing. So I, I want to make sure we mention that. That just kind of broke open today. Yeah, no, I love that. That's, yeah, hot off the press. We've been uh, discussing it internally as well, just what it means for business owners. So we're looking forward to digesting it further and, and seeing what the practical implications are for, for many members um, PHCC and home service, the home services trades across the country. This is, this is a great, great opportunity for them. So I'm really glad you brought that up. <laughs> Yay. Okay. 
Yay. Um, this might seem a bit counterintuitive with the fears out there, but some of the, the clients that you've worked with, uh, David, on, on your team, they're getting an upsurge or an, an increase in business. Um, what are some of the data points that you've been seeing with those customers? Uh, can you share some of those with us? Yeah, definitely. We've been doing a lot of research on our end because we want to keep our clients up to date of what we're seeing. And we're still seeing that the search volume is definitely out there. You know, as of today, we've seen a cost drop um, about 11% for the home service and advertising in the last week. Um, Leads for home service uh, have been up about 15% compared to the last three months. Um, we've also seen uh, leads for home service up 14% in the last two months. And then uh, going along those lines, um, we've seen in the last month it be up 3%. So if you still see comparative to the last three months when we didn't have all this going up, there's still the search volume out there um, that's happening. Like I said before, you know, people are staying home using things more often that wouldn't be used as more often. Uh, so we're seeing an increase in volume. And then kind of the last stat I wanted to share here, um, we've seen uh, the leads in the home service business go up about 150% over the last week because we're now getting more and more people that are getting told to stay home, you know, and so things again are getting used more and more often leads to more issues. And that data too, is, is, is that particular to paid search um, or any particular channel? Yeah, it's, it's uh, directly to paid search advertising. Got it. Great. Yeah. So obviously some really, really interesting data there. Um, what, what, what's the kind of recommendation for businesses to do right now when it comes to their advertising with respect to that information? I mean, for me, uh, I've been telling all my clients and what they should be doing is holding the advertising where it is. And if they can increase it, because you're seeing people, how I spoke about before that fear factor that they cut things right away. So it's allowing for my clients to get more of the market share at a cheaper cost Mm -hmm. and bring in more leads. Yeah. Yeah. I was wondering that if that's what what you would think is that because people are, are retreating, um, that that makes the the search volume and the cost per call or cost per lead um, uh, go down. That's good mm-hmm. news. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. We'll see too some different things with respect to um, how consumer behaviors changed. Right. So people are not out and about in the hustle bustle of life. They're chilling at home, and so we've seen there's been stats out there where we've seen an increase in Facebook traffic. So Facebook traffic's increased 50%, Instagram up 33% or something to that degree. So we have, uh, we see an increase in that social traffic, which is a real opportunity for business owners to get in front of their audience on social media platforms, similar to what you're doing, Ellen, with all the the video contents you've been posting. Well, I feel like this has always been on my list to get more (laughs) engaged with it. You know, I'm an old lady. I like need a a 15 year old minion to follow me around and and help me with it. Uh, But my team has really stepped up and our franchisees are more engaged than ever in social media, bragging on their team members, letting the community know that they're still out there, you know, really proud of the essential service uh, title that they have now. You know, they've always had it, but now people understand, you know, that there are these, there are heroes all over our communities right now from people stocking the shelves at the supermarket to the people in the hospital. And we're right smack in the middle with those who are keeping them safe from the challenges that, that happen every day with their mechanical systems. So it makes me proud, man. Um, also like you, I think FaceTime, I think getting on your phone with a video call is like the thing to do right now. One is like if you called one of your favorite customers and you just FaceTime them, they might pick up yeah. and then you can look them in the eyeball. I mean, this social distancing is a little isolating, right? Mm-hmm. And you have someone who's loving on you and you can ask them. There are business owners right now, their place is shut down. So that means it's empty. That is a safe place for us to work. And it is going to reopen at some point. And if you're a restaurant and if you're a, a, a commercial space that could be open first, you're going to have a competitive advantage on the other side when we hit dry land here. So I think just letting folks know that you're available, that you can go, that now is a good time to do the stuff that we've been putting off in a safe way is yeah. also another way. So to leverage what you're doing with your online marketing, 
with good old fashioned referral marketing and just reaching out to people and loving on them. Yeah, absolutely. And I did want to say uh, one thing that you hit on here, Ellen, is the videos and posting them to social media is really, really huge. And this is actually another way you can make your customers so very comfortable because you could actually film that interaction with, uh, you know, one of the clinicians and a customer and show exactly through a video what you're doing to keep them safe. And then yeah. you could That's get that on social point. media. Yeah. yeah. I love that. Uh, hey, Ellen, Ellen. Wiki, can I film you? Yeah. Yep. Let's go. Yeah. I like it. <laughs> Don't even have to sign a waiver. <laughs> yeah. They, they just have to say, okay, on the, on the recording. Yeah. yeah. And on, on your side, what, what can a business do to prepare for increased calls in their operations? Like what, what should a CSR be saying right now? Uh, our, C, our CSRs are, um, the, the training that we have gone through is to make sure that the customer feels like we are going to put pr- pr- protocol in place. We do have language in our scripts that says, is there some uh, is there anyone exhibiting systems? Is this a, a home where you're having some challenges right now as far as health concerns? And the, each individual company is going to make the call. Now, if you ha- here's the tricky part right now is the PPE, right? Yeah. Like if that, it's just in, um, it's not readily available everywhere. So each contractor out there has to assess their inventory every day and make sure that they are working on jobs where they can follow OSHA guidelines and CDC protocol to make sure that their team members stay safe. So I think that communication with the customers, they're getting it. Like we want to make sure that we're not putting our team members at risk and certainly we wouldn't want to put you at risk. We're mitigating this um, spread of disease. We can't keep people safe. Mm-hmm. Right. So together, if we communicate with our customers, I think some empathy, just a little awe. How many kids are home homeschooling is not a bad uh, service coordinator question right now. Yeah. Just to let the mom or, you know, whoever's in charge of homeschooling over there not know that there's a human being on the other end of the phone. Yeah. You know, we're in this together. And I think that just a little love and empathy to get that call, um, to get that um, relationship going is going to help uh, help your customer and help your team. A hundred percent. David, you to add to that? Yeah, no, I I absolutely agree. And then again, just having your CSRs walk through the steps that you guys are going to take to make sure their loved ones are going to be safe and them as well. Yeah, the contactless approach. Yeah. You know, there are things, um, you know, where you were using service tight to service tighten has really stepped up in terms of the features that are available in that program to go to, um, <laughs> paperless. We record the calls. You can email us an okay. We can FaceTime an okay. You know, so we, we are looking for ways. It's funny because like we used to em- embrace being close, come follow me around being close to the customer in the, uh, in the experience is yeah. just different. Yeah. yeah. Definitely innovate or die as, uh, as, uh, what's his face? I can't even think of his name right now. The old, old now ex CEO of Disney said, <laughs> Jeffrey uh, Eisner. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Okay. No, I, why am I? In it a, was him or Conan, the Ob- uh, Conan, the barbarian who said that. <laughs> Someone did. Uh, Robert Iger. Sorry. I have his book right over here and I don't know why. Robert Iger. That's it. Okay. Yeah. Bob, good old Bob Iger said it. Yeah. Die. <laughs> so, <laughs> there's been many iterations of that over the years. Um, well, hey, this has been really, really awesome and insightful. I really appreciate you both taking the time. Um, so much love to you both uh, over here on my end. And I just want to, one last thought if you're going to leave somebody with uh, one thing that they could do right now and continue to do during this crisis to create customers for life, um, uh, what would it be? And not just create customers for life, but really move their business through this trying time. Ellen, let's go ahead and start with you. Um, I would say gratitude. Gratitude that we're in an essential service. Gratitude for the people who continue to to, uh, call us. Gratitude for our team who's going in there every day. I mean, just don't neglect to notice that there are these little acts of heroism all over our industry. And I could not be more proud to be associated with it than I am right now. Awesome. Uh, And on your end, what do you say? Yeah, absolutely agree. Gratitude is definitely a great word uh, to use for that. Um, but exactly take, you know, 
every day how it is, you know, the days right now are going to be different and have gratitude that you're able to still go out and service these people, you know, make sure your attitude reflects that, you know, because as we were talking about earlier, the employment rate, you know, that could be you, but we're able to still go out and affect people's lives, which is amazing. You know, can I just add to what you said there? Because David, I think it's so important too. You don't have to solve every problem right now just what's in front of you. Like if they're, let's get enough calls today, get what we need to do it safely and go serve people. Like when you start to wind up, bring it back to like what's in front of you today, what's important right now. So that was that good, good job. <laughs> love that. Yes. <laughs> I love it all. <laughs> Thank you both. I appreciate your time again. And I know this is going to be really valuable to all the, all the business owners that are listening. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart, and I'll speak for all the business owners because I know this is valuable. And for everybody else listening, um, definitely share this around with all your business owner friends across the country and chat with your coaches over at PHCC as well if you have any questions, comments, concerns. Um, we're here as a resource. Scorpion's got a great resource page of, full of data and insights and trends that uh, are available to anybody who needs it right now. We're, we're all gonna get through this and this is a trying time, but uh, these trials are opportunities for us right now. And uh, we wanna make sure that we're moving through this together. So reach out to your PHCC coaches, get the information, utilize the guides that are out there to help guide and navigate this crisis. Till next time, we'll chat soon. Thanks everyone. Thanks so much, Scorpion. Mwah. Thanks, Josh.